Cameron. Okay. Hey, Cameron. Hey, Cameron. Let's see, we're still level 10? I believe so. Waiting for uh, Billy and Ciel. For tonight's uh, um, D and D After Dark session, I got a new whiskey to try out. So mm -hmm. Went to um, Total Wines, and uh, as I was checking out, I looked to my right. And they have a kiosk there, or a little stand, with this whiskey called Scatterbrain. And on the front label, is just it shows this elephant wearing mirror shades. And then I read the fine print on it, and it is peanut butter whiskey. That sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, it's it's uh, aged Canadian whiskey finished with peanut butter. So, and I'm like. It's too weird. I, I have to. I'm of the mind. I'm of the mind that you can add peanut butter to anything and make it better. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, mean I like you make some chicken, put some peanut butter on it. You make a brownie, put some peanut butter on it. Right. And it, it really runs the gamut. So why not peanut butter whiskey? Sounds great. How would you survive to this age with that mindset? It sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> whiskey is the test of the theory, right here. So. <laughs> I have, um, my, my blood pressure says it's an okay way to live. <laughs> I can't even make peanut butter with better with bacon, so that's saying something. <laughs> well, bacon makes everything that's better. A power couple. Yeah, that's, sure. that's my point. Peanut butter isn't made better by bacon, it's still peanut butter. <laughs> peanut butter on a hamburger is actually really delicious. You, you're also no, wrong. We love the burger. Peanut butter is delicious. Uh, Killer Burger makes one that's dill pickle and peanut butter and bacon. Yes, it's, that that is fantastic. Primary, but it is the best tasting thing I've like the best burger I've ever had. Yep, agreed. Yeah, you wouldn't think the dill pickle and peanut butter would go together, but it is absolutely fantastic. Oh, so good. <laughs> I'm not gonna try it. It's so it's good. An actually good burger to try. Right. Right. That is an actually good burger. <laughs> That's a mighty tasty burger. <laughs> May I have a sip of your cold beverage? <laughs> I literally just added Sam Jackson to my Alexa because so I was like, I gotta know. And <laughs> That's pretty good. Cool. About ten minutes. Yeah. I mean, now he's just a permanent voice, so everything I ask gets him, so that's fine. Yeah, I haven't done that yet, because I, I, I just imagine being like, you know, asking Alexa what the weather is, and it's like, here's the motherfucking weather! That's pretty much what it is. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. You can turn off the swearing. <laughs> you can turn off the swearing, but why would you get Sam Jackson to do that? Yeah, no, that sounds wrong. Shouldn't even be an option. <laughs> You'd only be able to turn it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, one part of my Alexa integration uh, talks to my door lock, and I can set custom text responses through my hub. So every time a particular <coughs> door code is entered, a different response greets you. Nice. So when I walk in the door, it says, Welcome, my master, every time. Oh, Lord. <laughs> when, when Amber comes to the door, it says Queen Amber has arrived. <laughs> I drilled the microphone out of my fire stick. No, oh, it's unusable now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sign I'm on. 
The microphone's unusable and the fire stick's unusable. The microphone, because if you try and disconnect the microphone, like they made it pretty much impossible to do any surgery on it. But if you take a drill to just like right above where the dot is, like it, it's gone. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't want it listening to me or having my kids try and ask stuff to the TV. I talk to yeah. my more than I talk to people, so. <laughs> All right, I shall bring us in. Welcome to Tyranny of Dragons. Uh, we will be picking up where we left off two weeks ago. We had a little vacation in between there. Uh, but before I do, let me thank the friends of the Greenwater Guild Hall. Uh, first on that list, well, if you're watching on Twitch, scroll down. You should see some tiles there that will link you to these fine people's websites if you don't see those tiles. Please click on my profile image, and my ugly mug will cause those tiles to pop up. First on the list is the Speechless Bard. She and her husband make beautiful leather products for your tabletop role-playing games. Uh, she handpicks all of the leather swaths. She does all of her uh, hand-cut, stitching, uh, stamping, all of it she does by hand. Absolutely marvelous work. Uh, she has a, a full line of different products, such as leather covers for your core rule books <clears throat> that she can customize to your liking. Uh, she has a full line of different uh, dice types of dice bracelets. Uh, <clears throat> she has a dice scrolling map that when you roll it up, it kind of looks like a spell scroll. And it's pretty neat. Uh, she is in the UK, so if you're ordering for a birthday gift or uh, any other time-sensitive reason, make sure that you give yourself plenty of time for it to cross the pond and make it through customs. And next on the list is the Fable Beard Company. Fable Beard Company makes beard bombs oils, butters, and co-wash, and each of their scent profiles is a different fantasy character. Uh, they just came out with uh, Spray on Cologne, and also they have like an eco-friendly uh, natural uh, deodorant that they came out with, all with the different scent profiles. Uh, they have a buy one, get one free for first-time purchasers. If you uh, log in and create an account, you can put two beard oils into your cart, and if you use the code FIRST in all capital letters, that second beard oil will be discounted to free. So, where we left off, you guys uh, had just gone in and slaughtered a bunch of babies in the hatchery, uh, yon tea babies, and uh, I don't remember where we left off as far as like a rest goes, so I'm going to assume that you guys took a long rest because it's been two weeks, and that's just too much math. Um, so yeah, you guys completed a long rest. You got all your hit points and your spell slots back. Um, is is Yip and Schlagen not going to make it today? Or I don't remember. I don't remember either, to be honest. I can ask him. Yeah, let me send him a message. I'll hold on here. Anyways, uh, while we're waiting for them, I will just go ahead and move forward. So, um, <clears throat> so where would you like to go from the hatchery? How about 
Yeah, that south. South. Oh, the uh, south door? Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to remind myself the map orientation where north is to the right. I know, right? Yeah, I I have to remind myself of that every time I open this map. Kick it in, Leroy Jenkins style. That is up to you guys. That is up to you guys. So, so if you want to listen at the door, go ahead and make a uh, perception check. Okay, twenty-three. So you don't hear anything on the other side. Take it in. Okay, bust the other door. Okay. So <clears throat> you bust in the door, and uh, the this chamber is foul smelling. Um, there are it's piled high with trash and filth. Uh, make a nature check. Chris, while he does that, can you put my token on the board? Oh, shoot. Yes. Yes, I can. Uh, it's, it's totally no but no problem. I My attendance has been uh, shamefully spotty. So I haven't been with the crew. Yeah, letting life intrude on D and D, it's uh, inappropriate. Well, it's We're amazing. Glad to be back. Yes. Thank you. It's amazing how, I, I, how often I'll send a message on like Friday evening, like, "Oh, do you need anything before the weekend starts? You know, what can I do for you?" No, no, we're fine. And then Saturday morning, oh my gosh, we have this thing. Okay, I'll be there. There you go. Stop sending the message Friday night. That's right. Yeah. Well, the, the the thing is, is they tell me they've got everything they need, and then we also have very different ideas of what is urgent. Yeah. 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 That's true. Which, I, I, figure, I figure that's totally fair because um, you know I've gone this long without kids, so now I have, <laughs> now you now have to have, now you have your parents. Yeah. This is this is something I need right now. Really, do you really need it right now? We we uh okay. we went to the the family reunion last weekend, and uh, it, it was funny because I I noted that uh, my mother in law is finally starting to exhibit the the natural signs of being a baby boomer. And when I say that, what I mean is that, and you'll notice that this seems like a a, a blanket thing with all boomers. That if there is a new law that's passed or a new policy that's put into place, especially with like Medicare, Medicaid, or Social Security, <clears throat> their complaint is never that, oh my God, why are they doing this to my my generation or why are they doing this to all of the people in my age group? They don't. They, that's not what they say at all. It's always fucking personal to them. Why are they doing this to me? And my mom used to do that, and I would tell her, I'm like, Mom, Social Security doesn't even fucking know who you are. They don't give a shit about you. That policy change was not personal. They did it to everyone. Well, it affects me the most. They are, like, the most selfish generation I have ever met in my life. This was done two administrations ago. And right. have been on the book for 12 years. Right. You have, you have to remember who it was that invented participation trophies. Yeah. People like you know millennials get in trouble for get, have being used to be receiving participation trophies and therefore expecting something. But it's like, well, someone decided to go to the trophy store, right? And make them, I'll and it wasn't the person that was a kid then. Yeah. 
Like, it's not the kid's fault. I didn't choose a participation trophy. <laughs> if you put one in my hand, I'm going to be stoked, but I didn't go buy it. Oh, anyway. So you kick up, so on your 11, <clears throat> That's just, you got just barely enough to make the roll. You determine that they, these chambers, uh, piled high with filth and trash and smell terrible, are the quarters of um, lizard folk slaves of the Auntie. Is he the only one at the door? Do the rest of us like hang back? You don't have uh, to. I think. I think Mist had said something about going up towards the door as well. I'm probably going to go in. I'm too curious to not go. You going to what? My character is too curious to not go. I have to go. It's necessary. Mine's too finicky and doesn't like garbage, so she's hanging back. And then out of this room, there is another door to the east. I had, to, I'll go through. I had to turn my head sideways so I could figure out which direction is right. <laughs> I'll follow. I'll try to the stinky room to be sure the uh, other door isn't hiding something. Okay. Um, you as you're moving your way through the trash, you kick some trash out of your way, and you see that there are three silver pieces sitting on the floor, and there may be more. Of course, the silver hold much meaning for us now. <laughs> it's true. I mean, one silver piece is, you know, one tenth of a gold. Stay at the dinner. Yeah, I'll pick them up. Go ahead and make an investigation check. Oh, you know, that's my strong suit. That's my that's my bag. The jam. Fourteen. Not bad. In total, you are able to find fifty silver pieces. Ooh. <laughs> I will add that bounty of loot to the party page. Does anybody else want to make an investigation check? Heck yeah, I see them grab shinies. I want shinies too. 18. Okay, so you find another 75 silver pieces and 10 gold pieces. I run out to the party. There's shinies everywhere! <laughs> Does anybody else want to check? I suppose I'll, I'll dig through the garbage. <laughs> you don't dislike garbage that much. <laughs> now, once the gold and silver starts coming out of the garbage, it, it starts to gross me out a little less. <laughs> mm. Wow, uh, you find another 12 gold pieces. And that is the limit of all the loot that's in this room. And you, when you guys are digging through this trash, it appears that the the lizard folk were trying to hide them under various pieces of trash. I mean, obviously they didn't hide them very well, but um, it seems like they were trying to keep this from the from the yawn team knowing that they had it. So I'm going to keep my gold so that if we end up freeing lizard folks since they're trying to break from oppression I don't think I'm going to rob them I'll give it back to them if we can save them from slavery okay but if we if we don't save them from uh, slavery then I'll put it in the party kitty very nice so out of this room you have a passageway that lead a hallway that leads to the east that there is a door at the end of the hallway, and then of course there is this door as well. Let's look at that before we're done. Is 
I will listen at that door. Not as good. Okay. In here, hold on, let me find something for this. Okay, so let's see here. You Yeah, you hear that there is movement and uh um low low talking uh quiet talking going on. Um not loud enough for you to really make out what is being said, but you can tell that there's people on the other side of that door. Well, I will tell this so maybe he can go stab one and shut them up. Yeah, Did stabbing's always good. Is the door locked? Can I test it? It is not locked. Um, next question is, I don't know how this works, but the spell darkness, how does darkness work in terms of like casting that since I have that as my, one of my things. So <clears throat> it fills a area, uh, hold on here and I will look it up. I'm monk things. Do you have devil sight? I do not have devil sight. But you won't be able to see in darkness, but if you had trap defense or blind fight or something like that, you could still attack unknown squares, but the problem, unless you're a warlock, is you can't see either. Yeah, it basically puts everybody in disadvantage. So, <clears throat> it <clears throat> magical darkness nothing. spreads from a point you choose within range, which is 60 feet, uh, and fills a 15-foot radius sphere for the duration. Um, and it, it, as long as you concentrate on it, darkness can last up to 10 minutes. Uh, it spreads around corners. A creature with dark vision cannot see through this darkness, and non-magical light cannot illuminate it. If the point you choose... Sounds like a bad idea, then. If the point you choose is on an object you are holding or one that isn't being worn or carried, the darkness emanates from the object and moves with it. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a good idea, but... It can be very useful in certain situations, like especially if you have like a caster because that ruins their line of sight. Okay. Yeah, a lot of spells say on a spot on the floor you can see or a target you can see. So anything that requires sight, you can block up a hallway and they can't throw a fireball through it because they have to be able to see past it. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Well, in this case, then I will just 
bust in the room and see who's in there who decides that who, who's going to get some killing. Okay. So you bust open the door, and in this cylindrical, or <clears throat> so it's a cylindrical room, there are dozens of cylindrical shafts about three feet wide and seven feet deep that are cut into the stone floor. Um, two totems stand in the room, both in the form of asps rising up from their, with their mouths open. Um... Let's see here. There are three lizard folk and a Yonti pure blood in here. I'm just to hold on, just make a dash at the Yonti clear pure blood if I can while they're all still kind of surprised by my entrance. Okay, sorry, I was reading this and it um, it was confusing me because it was saying that there was something here and I had to double check them out. Um, so, <clears throat> everybody roll initiative. Should have had you bash the door and see if that would give us like any kind of surprise level or surprise round. Where's Schlagen? Hold on, I will put him back on the board. Technically, it's you. Oh, okay. There we go. Yep, and slogging her on the board. So, Shredder and Elmira, which one of you wants to go first? <clears throat> I don't mind being second to last. Clean up. Um, I want to go second. Okay. Okay. Because I heal people up, so... Okay. Yeah. All right. So, <clears throat> Mist, you get a surprise round. Uh, or a surprise turn, what would you like to do? This thing. Whatever the hell it is. <laughs> That's the young thing, right? Correct. <laughs> Alright. I would... To get past the lizard folk to get to it, does that provoke anything, or do I have to do any, like, special movement to get past them? Oh, uh, let's see here. Because I think I can jump over them, but I'm not sure. You could get between them without... Well, no, you really couldn't. If you move between here, you're going to be within their five-foot threat range, so... Can you walk okay. up walls yet with your monk stuff? 
Um, I can't walk up one of them. No, I haven't got that far on my mom. Nice. Yep. What's my turn? How do I got to that mention? Uh, so let's see here. A high jump, uh, you would move 10, 10 feet and jump a number of feet equal to three, to 3 plus your strength modifier. Uh, that's not that much. Okay. A long jump is move 10 feet, um, or 10 plus feet, and jump a number of feet equal to your strength score. Okay, then never mind. That changes that plan. I will then see if I can take this one out and maybe I have enough movement to then get to this one after. Okay. Go for it. Alrighty. So I bust in this room. Aha, there's a full die. <laughs> and uh where the hell did I get she go? Twenty four to hit? That hits. Alrighty. And since they're Surprise, and... You have advantage. So you can yeah, okay. re-roll that and see if you get a nat 20. Nope. <laughs> I'll take the first roll. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, still, that's damage. That's flame tongue plus the two sneak attacks plus, uh, yeah, plus the fire to... Fire damage. Did they have any resistance to fire? No. Where did I put them back there? As a bunch of just like classic guy, and I feel like I rolled these six as enough for this, but I just started setting them aside for this purpose exactly. Mm. <clears throat> Alright, that's five and a six. 6, 12, 4, no, that's bad math. 16, 16, and then I can re-roll them for the crit damage, right? Correct. All right. I can put like 16 on a 5, <coughs> 6 is, I can probably do better than that. Yeah, I would think. Apparently I could not. <laughs> <laughs> so five, ten, and then another eleven. I chose four. So 30. okay, but that no. is enough mm -hmm. that you kill this uh, lizard folk outright. All right, cool. <clears throat> and then with my extra movement, I kind of like to like run along here, to over here, and then attack this guy. Go for it. Yeah. Shit, I forgot. Uh, I calculate my attack different on the second one because that's. Oh, that's my basic attack. Well, you your second attack should be the same as your first. Um, okay. Then, yeah. it, it's your bonus attack that's count calculated differently. Oh, okay. Then yes. Uh, does an eighteen hit? Yes, it does. Okay. And this one does get the surprise or no? Yes. So yes. you can re-roll that, see if you get a, a better roll. Oh, right. I can't forget I'm on an advantage. Nope. What? That's weird. I rolled, I rolled, <coughs> I re rolled, I got an eight. So I'm like, no, nope, taking the first roll. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, I'm definitely gonna just keep that one and double it because there were stick moves in there, so okay. Uh six, ten, fifteen, no, no, six, no, ten, fifteen. Where? Fourteen. That's less than the other roll was. Weird. Whatever. Fourteen times two, twenty-eight. Okay. Uh and your bonus attack. Bonus attack. I mean, assuming that you want to attack with your bonus action, it's up to you. Yes, 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 yes. Definitely want to do bonus attack. Um, yes. Why am I having such a hard time thinking of what I'm supposed to do here? <laughs> I will... <laughs> 
what? Damn it. I had this in my brain. I think I played it out different if I had to have this playing out. And so I'm like, oh, no, that's not right. Uh, yeah, just a attack again, I guess. How does the okay. bonus attack play differently then? Because that's the one that takes the lower um, base attack bonus then? Or... Right. So, <clears throat> with your bonus attack, you cannot... I don't believe you add your damage... Or, or you don't add your dex or strength modifier to your damage. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, shit, I forgot to add the, the previous attack. No, <laughs> <laughs> jeez. So dumb. <laughs> can I add another eight to the first? Because I can the attack I did on the second guy. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can have little things like things that add damage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this time, but without the dex bonus. Okay. But I'm still at advantage, right? Correct. Okay. Twenty-four hits. Does eighteen hit? Yes. All righty. Six, so eighteen, twenty, twenty-three. Is this one doubled as well, or is it there we got hit once, they're not surprised, so there's no... Yeah, yeah, you only get the assassinate on your first attack. Okay, then 23. Alright, you kill the Yanti pureblood outright. I would like to, as a free action, tell the other two, submit to our will. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, make a, um, are you, are you trying to persuade them or intimidate them? Let me check what I'm most best to stat. Uh, say either way. Uh, intimidate. To kill it, two of them guys. Okay, go ahead and uh, make an intimidation check. 16. They surrender and lay down their weapons. Sorry, guys. They don't want to fight no more. <laughs> you want to find out if they were slaves working against their will or if they were here because they wanted to be here? So, yeah, these two lizard folk lay down their weapons and surrender. Um... They only speak Draconic. You can speak Draconic too. So they're just slogging. I'm all the Draconic speakers. So they tell you that they are um, slaves of the Yon T um, and uh, I mean, they're obviously not happy about that. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're slaves of the auntie and would prefer to be released from service. Um, and they're, they're, they're visibly worried that you guys are <clears throat> going to just kill, kill them outright. Well, I'll give them back the gold that they were hoarding that I found as well. Okay. And tell them they should probably leave this place. Okay. Yep. Yeah, they are quite happy with that idea, and uh, are they just go ahead and scoot along? Did you want to give them back your gold too? Did you say you were hold on for them? I forget who that was. I think it was Bog Knock. But I think she stepped away for a moment. Uh, I felt inspired by Bog Knock. So out of this room, there is a door to the north and a door to the east. What do you think, gang? <clears throat> also, in the... Um, 
So, like I said, there, this floor is covered in three foot diameter, seven foot deep holes. And you can clearly see in these holes that there are a total of 200 silver pieces and 150 gold pieces. And you find a potion of poison. Did that dead thing have anything, that Yanti? Nope. Okay. What's a potion of poisoning? I mean, I assume it poisons, but like, how does that work? So a potion of poison, well, hold on. So a potion of poison looks, smells, and tastes like a potion of healing or other, other beneficial po potion. However, it is actually a poison masked by illusion magic. Um, if you drink it, you take 3d6 poison damage, and you must succeed a D on a DC 13 constitution saving throw or be poisoned. Um, at the start of each of your turns, while you are poisoned in this way, you take an additional 3d6 poison damage. At the end of each of your turns, you can repeat the saving throw. On a successful save, the poison damage you take on your subsequent turns decreases by 1d6. The poison ends when the damage decreases to zero. Okay. So <clears throat> it's not something that you could coat a blade or an arrow with, but you could use it to add to, po or add to food or drink or, you know, go up to somebody and say, here is a healing potion, and then they quaff it and are poisoned. This is... That's handy. Yes, Open again. I mean, you can yeah. have a battle, battle of the minds like in Princess Bride. <laughs> Who do we feel would be the best for the Battle of the Minds, or maybe play demure and slip into someone? I don't know. It's well, up to you I guys. I am a cleric, so if I gave somebody a healing potion, they would probably assume it actually heals, or if they tried to steal it from us or something. In all honesty, in all the years I've played D&D, I've never found much of a use for a potion of poison. Um, other than the, other than when I was DMing, because I would say, "Oh, well, you found a healing potion," and then somebody drinks it and they're poisoned. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll, do, use I will try and use it. I'll try and find a situation to use it. Um, exactly, it's like challenge accepted. In all my years of DMing, this has never been helpful. We are going to feed that poison to a goddamn dragon. <laughs> okay, I'll write it on my sheet. Okay, and so the total was 200 silver pieces and 150 gold pieces. And it appears that these holes in the floor, from what you make out, these are uh, sleeping chambers for uh, yon tea in snake form. Whoa. Hi guys, sorry we're late. No worries. <clears throat> so, there is a door to the north and a door to the east out of this room. Where would you like to go? Okay. Can I run detect evil and see if I can get a sense of something? Uh, detect evil doesn't. I mean, the whole place reeks of evil, but. <laughs> Yeah, detect evil doesn't detect anything specific. 
That's all I see. It makes concentration of something. And Shredder, you don't hear anything on the other side of this door. Actually, you don't hear anything on the other side of either of these doors. It's too quiet. What do you think we should do, guys? <laughs> Kick in the door. Kick it. <laughs> Kick kicking. <laughs> oh, hold on here. I only rolled the 25 to kick. Okay, you see a short hallway <clears throat> that ends with another door going to the northeast. I want to kick in the hallway. Yeah, kick everything. That was working. Kick the world. <laughs> yeah. Kick the planet. Uh, I'll listen at this door as well. Maybe we give um, the rogue another opportunity to stabby stab. Oh, that's the nice. Who's harmonic fairy group in the home on assassination anyway? 25, listen, check. Okay, hold on here. So you don't <clears throat> you don't hear anything on the other side of this door. It seems eerily quiet. <clears throat> I will break through the eeriness and kick it. I'm a kicking machine twenty five. So this room, uh, you kick open the door. It's a large chamber, and it appears to be a meditation chamber. Um, Guess why he's going that way. Schlagen will go through the door to the south. Let's do a quick peek in. Okay. Um, so before I get to that, so in this room you see that there are two statues uh, that appear to be shrines to Yonti deities Mirshalk and Seth. Um, the other two walls have statues of Yonti high priests carved into them. Um, and there are suits of plate armor arranged as offerings at their feet. Uh, Schlagen, you open this door. And you see a hallway. It's just so yeah, Schlagen, you look down this hallway, or you look down this hallway, and it appears that this hallway ends in a dead end. Anything in the room at all? It appears, eh? Uh, you don't see anything but a hallway <coughs> that that is a dead end. <laughs> yeah, for shits and giggles, let's... Do what now? Can we go search the room anyway? Okay. Okay, so as Shredder enters into the meditation chamber, I need to find something for this. He's going to start meditating and then annoying everybody by telling us all how we need to start 
but it feels yeah. you. Realign your chakras. I have so many benefits, you guys. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> So, as uh, Shredder enters the meditation chamber, you see that under the the suits of plate armor that were at the statue's feet, that were put there as uh, like offerings, you see that there are hundreds of little snakes that crawl into the armor pieces, and the armor pieces come up and form two helmed horrors that are going to attack. Uh, everybody roll initiative. Sweet. Damn it. <laughs> and what did Yip get? Okay. <clears throat> Miss, do you hear Shredder um, <clears throat> kind of yell out and what would you like to do? Yell the turtle power. <laughs> I will run down the hallway to see what the hell had him yell out because he don't yell out much. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, shit. <laughs> and I'll go after this one. Go for it. So, like, these suits of armor, you can see, like, snakes moving around inside and, and the whole bit. Oh, that's just disgusting. Wow, that was like a lot of my movement just to get here. Okay. Do 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 do. Nineteen plus twenty-seven. That hits. Sweet. Wait, I think I'm supposed to take advantage because it hasn't gone yet. Really bad remember how that works. So this is gonna be so we can do it for me. Advantage. Alright. Let me roll again just to see if I can turn that into a crit. Nope, 19 again. Okay. <laughs> and so that's just the silver and flame tone for 10 damage. Alright. Uh, your next turn, or your next attack. Twelve plus twenty. Stop twenty. Yes, that hits. <coughs> six damage. Okay. And You're bonus. Doing well, these six years. Uh, bonus. And for for bonus, I will take. They disengage and jump back. All right. Good. I need my room. He disengages. Okay. They didn't get back up that far. All right. Yep. Yeah. What would you like to do? <coughs> it would like to wake up.
Okay. Okay. And anything else? Do I think that fire would hurt suits of armor filled with snakes? They have no particular resistance. They are immune okay. to force, necrotic, and poison damage, though. Uh, the no cats flaming sphere. Okay. Okay, so flaming sphere. You go ahead and roll your damage. Or do they get they get a deck save, right? <clears throat> So, for their duck save, they got a 16. It's a DC. So, half damage, I think? Uh, half damage. Okay. Yeah. We didn't rest since the last game, correct? Yeah, you, we, we counted that you took a long rest, so you should have all your spell slots and hit points. I couldn't, it, it, two weeks, I couldn't remember if you'd ended on a long rest or not, so I was just like, yeah, you guys can have a long rest. So how much damage did you do? After half. That is half. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Bognock, what would you like to do? I am going to get myself up, run about here. And cast Thunder Wave. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, is the red square here the flaming sphere? That's what I was <coughs> going to try to do, but I can't move it apparently. Uh, oh, wait, maybe I don't understand what's going on. Big surprise. So, is this something I can't? Is that something I can't run around? Oh, well, you don't want to run through it, but that's not really where it's at. I don't know why it's not letting me move it either. That's very strange. Yeah, so it's actually like on one of the, the sneaky dudes. Okay. And what's the area, like how big is the area of effect? Where do I need to stand to avoid it? It's a five foot square, so don't stand on his face. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then I'm fine where I am. Yeah. Okay. That is very strange. It's not letting me do anything with shapes. So it's a DC 16 constitution. Okay, so let's see here. He got a 17. <coughs> okay. So I think that's half, which would be seven. Okay. And he is not pushed back. Uh, okay. Let's see here. Anything with a bonus action or movement? Yeah, I'm going to throw my rocks right there. Right where? I 
here. Okay. Go ahead and make your rocks check. All of those miss. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Now, I have a second attack, but since I cast for the first, does that mean I can't do anything else? Correct, because the uh, the attack is an attack action. Casting a spell is a casting action. So, no. There's no other attack. Right. Shredder Baracus, what would you like to do? I will move... Well, first I will rage. That. Make myself ragey, ragey. Come on, there we go. What's the uh, mark on the map? Sorry, that. I can't delete it without deleting the other guy, too, so just ignore it. Okay, I'll move over here and attack this guy. Go for it. Uh, here with Hezeron. Oh, sorry, Reckless. Yeah. Good thing I'm always Reckless. 18. That is a mess. Make sure I get Reckless on this time. There we go, 30. Yep, that it. So he takes... Has a plus two item, 25 points, plus I'm going to use one of my Infectious Furies and make him take, oh, well, first I was saving throw DC 14. Yep, he fails with a natural one. 2d12 Psychic. Nice, 21 Psychic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's um, hurt. Bonus, bonus tail. Or sorry, I raged. Never mind. No tail. Okay. Done. So the helm horror is going to make two longsword attacks on uh, Shredder. Okay. Well, I know a 12 misses. Yep. Uh, and the Helmed Horror gets a nat 1 and falls prone. Woohoo! Good for him. The other Helmed Horror is going to move up and make two longsword attacks on Bog Knock. Misses with a 12. <laughs> 25 to hit. <clears throat> For seven points of slashing damage. <laughs> Schlagen, what would you like to do? Let's see, Schlagen will take his full movement, will get him just to the inside of the door. That way, close enough. Since I just got in the room, don't know quite what's going on. I'm just going to hit that guy with uh, two Eldritch Blasts. Good plan. Are you there? Yeah. So keep in oh, mind, okay. they are immune to force damage. That's why I just I like, just looked at and like wait can I um well negate that then let's see what other quick spell I can throw uh, 
I had a different one anyway. Yep, they're immune to necrotic damage. Um, I will use a free action black go team go and yeah. <laughs> Okay. Alright. Elmira, what would you like to do? I'll hop on my wolf and that'll get me to the doorway. Okay. Fifteen. That is a miss. God oh, damn it. Okay. Uh, not a lot more I can do. Okay. Sorry, everybody. Missed, what would you like to do? I will move my happy self over here. Wait, which one is, have either of them been hurt significantly? Yeah, this one has taken the most damage. This okay, one is one essentially untouched. Oh. We should probably finish off one so that there's not two attackers then. Let's move here and attack at this one. Go for it. Well, that did not go well. Uh, 14. That's a mess. You're stuck at that. <laughs> I was rolling so well until that one. <sighs> 17. That's a mess. Some of them, I was home so well and then everything just started going downhill. Um, I'm just going to go for the bonus attack. I mean, screw it. <laughs> I missed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Rolled an 8, a 6, and a 9. <laughs> Oof. Uh, yep, what would you like to do? You gonna continue concentration on the flaming sphere? I am definitely concentrating on the flaming sphere. Okay, so I guess he gets another deck save and he fails with a twelve. Seven damage. Okay. He takes another seven damage. Did you want to move or bonus action? Well, I don't know where he put the mouse, so I can't measure anything. <laughs> um, First world problems. Right? Can I throw a tiny javelin at the leftmost one? Yes, you can. Where is he? I can't reach that one either. Does a 22 hit? Yes, it does. Damn it. How much? Two. Okay. So, at least he's not untouched anymore. Bognock, what would you like to do? I am going to hit this one with my uh, lightning boots. All right. Finally. That hits. All right. Uh, Let's see. Uh, so that's five of lightning, and then I'm 
gonna throw rocks at him. Go for it. Rocks, rocks, rocks. Going rocks. That's what I do. I throw rocks. The, Ooh, one of those was a crit. Yep, the 29 hit. Uh, double damage for a crit. That's the 29? My god. You stupid snakes. <laughs> Alright. Time is much. <laughs> yeah. So 14. Nice. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Alright. So, Shredder, what would you like to do? I get another attack. Oh, that's true. You do get another. Yeah, she do get another attack. I use lightning boots. I get to do. It. I get to do it again. Yep. So I'm gonna do that exact sequence again. Lightning boots, stick rocks. Well, the rocks were your bonus action. So two attacks don't. Each attack doesn't get a bonus action. No, you only get one bonus action right. per turn. Yes, lightning boots. That's fine. Double damage. Yes. Feel the wrath of my boobs. <laughs> so 16. Okay. Well, the helmed horrors don't like being picked on. So the first one is going to make a long sword attack, one against Shredder, one against uh, Mist. Uh, I'm sure a 15 misses Shredder. Yep. 23 to hit missed. I know what that is. For 5 points of slashing damage. How dare you. And the other Elm Door is going to make two uh, longsword attacks on Bognock. Shit. So on his first swing, he trips and falls prone. Oh, and the first uh, first one uses half of his movement to stand up, so he doesn't look like a dipshit. And then the other one looks like a dipshit. It's going to make a uh, swing at disadvantage on Bognock. I just rolled two nat 20s. Ha <laughs> ha! So Bognock is going to take 13 points of slashing damage. <laughs> Schlagen, what would you like to do? Long and long, run up to that guy. Yeah, I want to look good. Step up to that guy. And hit him with my big ass. Go for it. Oh, uh, let's see. First act swing. Um, twenty six. That hits. Uh, Fifteen damage on the first hit. Okay, so your next attack. Second attack. Ooh, nap 20. Nice. Double damage. Uh, eight, 16. Yay. Okay. Roll the one on my damage. So he's hurting. Uh, anything with a bonus action? I have a third attack. Oh, that's right. Go for it. Uh, 18 to hit? That's a mess. And anything with a bonus? No, I don't think I need to cast a bonus spell at the moment. 
Okay, Elmira, what would you like to do? Is anybody really hurting? I, I don't think so, right? Sure. No. I mean, Bog Nock took a big hit, but probably not enough to really worry her yet. No, I'm, I've am i got 45 out of 65 still. Okay. Um, if you do end up giving me a potion or something, please don't give me the poison since we were just talking about it. <laughs> That's all. All right. So I'll try guiding bolt again on the same guy. I took a step so I shouldn't hit anybody. Okay. 19. The same thing hit. Just missed. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll say here again. Go. And have him do bite attack. Go for it. <clears throat> see. Screw it. I got 19 again. God. Seriously. Uh, okay. So he Nothing. somehow missed fighting. No, wait. If he's within five feet of um, an ally, then he gets advantage. So. All right. I rolled even worse. <laughs> so I'll just, I'll just pat myself on the back and pretend I didn't do anything because that's pretty embarrassing. At least you tried. Literally, we don't like snakes. Missed. What would you like to do? I'd like to redeem myself for that sorry excuse for an attack a moment ago by trying again. <laughs> Even worse, roll the three. Second attack. Nice. You know what? We're switching that dice out. It's getting progressively worse. Nat 20. Oof. Nice. Double damage. <laughs> <laughs> it went from this dice is not working for me to six and all of me. Alrighty. That'd be the flame tongue plus the sneak attack to people all around the thing. Six, ten, <coughs> eleven, twelve, fifteen. And I'm gonna re-roll those because only one of them is good. So fifteen nope. Nineteen with plus four. I remember that. Plus nineteen. Damn you! Don't forget your sneak attack. You you get sneak attack. Yeah, I did put it in. Okay. Good. Nineteen. Okay, that helmed horror goes down and is filled with little dead snakes. Did. Anything with um, movement and a bonus action? Bonus action? Not really. I mean, I suppose I could try and hit the other thing. You could do that. I will move around and attempt to hit that thing then. How's that? Twenty-two. That hits. Or well done. Okay. Yeah. What would you like to do? Lemon spear over to the other guy. Okay. Uh, he fails his deck save with a 10. Ten damage. All right. Anything else for you? Mm -hmm. Yip is going to run in here and try to poke him with a sword. It's very small, though. Mm -hmm. Because there's all of the everybody else doing all secret my sneak attack damage? Yes. 21 to hit? That hits. Uh, 
Uh, 17 damage. And this guy goes down. Nice. So in here, um, in the eyes of the statues, you find four rubies worth a thousand gold pieces each. Wow. Got them. And that's all that's in here. Give me just a second, I'll be right back. That's all, just four thousand gold. Just just that. <laughs> Okay, so where would you guys like to go from here? Why don't we go explore that other door out of the uh, cylinder? Yeah. Okay. It's a weird little room. So yeah, this hallway appears to end in a dead end. 
Let's investigate. <laughs> Am I still able to uh, do a detect magic in that room? See if I notice any illusions or anything? Nope, no illusions yeah. or anything like that. <clears throat> Only have the illusion of happiness. Oh. <laughs> I roll perception or investigate. Investigate. That's like 24 of them. Okay. Eight. So you find that there is a pressure plate in the floor right here that <clears throat> would trigger a dart trap. Ooh. Anyone want some darts? Want some free darts? <laughs> Just stand on this plate and they'll come right to you. <laughs> Is you small enough to stand on it without getting hurt? No. Uh, the pressure plate will activate with five pounds of pressure. Um, I can spider climb over it, but we will have to set it off at some point. Can I set it off from above? Well, I mean, a rogue can use their thieves' tools to disable the trap. Finish thing you say. I'll have to ask if the thieves' tools can do that. <laughs> Alrighty, thieves' tools, don't let it down. Yeah. Not great, but not bad. That plus that seventeen plus. These tools use dexterity, right? Correct. Plus two times your proficiency bonus if you took an, if you've taken expertise in them. Hell yeah, not good. <laughs> Top twenty. Okay, so you are able to disable. You you basically shim this. Uh, pressure plate so that it can't depress and uh, you are able to lock it in place. Guys, there's a plate. Mist, make a perception check. I need it. Lapping 15. Okay, so you find a secret door. Oh. Yeah. I found a secret door, y'all. Secret, secret. I found a secret. <laughs> While they're playing with the uh, the pressure plate and the secret door, I'm gonna cast my fine steed to have a horsey. Okay. I will walk through the dungeon going flippity clappity flippity clap. Yeah, you're probably going to have a problem riding the horse through the dungeon because most of these uh, ceilings are only 10 feet tall. So, uh, but I mean, you can cast Fine Steed and you only have to cast it once. You can dismiss your horse and bring it back without having to recast Fine Steed. Yeah, that's what I figured. Well, I've already cast it long ago. Right, so yeah, you're probably not going to call your horse and, and ride around in the dungeon with low ceilings. No, but I can send it to run people over. That's true. Maybe the fine steed is like little Sebastian. <laughs> I thought you were just the princess of Versailles. Are you the Olympics? If anybody gets that reference, if you don't. I literally yeah. thought of Little Sebastian. So I was like, yeah. okay, what about a pony? And then I was like, no, what about a miniature horse with a huge <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good. That's not the only one. Yeah. So yeah, Mist found a secret door uh, going to the south. Well... So you want to go in first? Is the door locked? No, don't really need to lock secret doors usually. <laughs> That's a good point. There's secret. It's hidden and locked. 
<laughs> I opened the door. The clue is in there, I found. You could always stealth in if um, you wanted to <coughs> go with non kicking. So you or open you this, kick. you yeah. open the secret yeah. door. And you find that there are six cells in here. This is where the Yon T would keep prisoners. But all of the cells are presently empty. Alright. I'd like to investigate the room just to find out why there's some secret. Mm, you don't find anything in the prison. Uh, but there is a door that leads to the west out of here. Oh. Weird. So they don't have any prisoners in their secret prison? That's pretty lame. Ooh. Well, only one side of the prison is secret. The other side just has a door. Okay. Uh, this is for the VIP prisoners that know stuff, I'm sure. I bet you this was an escape route. They were saving them just for us. You can also start to hear the sounds of, like, large kettle drums being beat in a steady rhythm. The opening sequence to Blade? What? <laughs> More like uh, Temple of Doom. Run away, run away. <laughs> oh, you so where would you guys like to go from here? The only way we can go to prison. <laughs> Out through the indoor. Okay. So as you get close to this door, the sound of the the rhythmic sound of the drums increases. And poking your head out this door. <laughs> to the south, you see... <clears throat> well, hold on, I'll tell you what you see. So to the south, just outside this door, you turn and look to the left, <clears throat> and you see a large temple, and hold on, I will fill it with people. Thank you, sir. Let's go.
<laughs> okay. <clears throat> so you look into this temple, and along the walls, there are four Yanti purebloods that are beating these uh, kettle drums. And you see that at the base of an altar are two Yanti malasongs. They're the ones with snake heads and um, humanoid bodies. One of them has um, a snake head. The other one has a human head and body, but it has snake arms. And then behind the altar, uh, getting ready to sacrifice a dwarf in black and purple robes on the altar is a Yanti abomination. Uh, everybody roll initiative. Wow, oh, missed. You got, uh, oh, you got an 18 this time. Okay. Okay. So you see this uh, whole thing going on. Uh, yep, what would you like to do? They haven't noticed us yet? No, they, they, seem, they, they seem very intent on the, you know, following the ritual that the abomination is about to sacrifice the uh, dwarf on the altar. Are we all closer to the hallway to see this, or are we still kind of mostly in the cells? Uh, well, Shredder moved forward. I'm sure that he would tell the rest of you what's going on up there. Yeah. Want all the kills for myself to keep it secret. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible friend, not sharing the blood murdering hobo -ness. Yip is going to turn into a giant constrictor snake, so pretty much a big ass anaconda. Okay. And I'm just going to try to snakey waltz right in there like I belong in there. Okay. Go ahead and make a deception check. Uh, six. My, my sneaky Watson did some improvement. So the Yanti purebloods know that you're not um, a Yanti. I don't know. They can they can just tell, <clears throat> and they stop beating their drums, and all eyes turn to you. Um, yes. Oh shit! I'm sorry. Bog knock actually would have gone first. And Snakey E's telling you're here to talk to him about the car warranty. <laughs> 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 Snakey E's telling you that you're here to talk so, yeah, all yeah, eyes okay. turn to Yip. Bognock, what would you like to do? I'm going to come in behind Yip and uh, hit with my um, longbow. Okay. 
Who are you shooting? At the main, this guy. Okay. I missed because I hit because it was 13. Yes, that is a miss, and now the Yanti are really uh, pissed off. You can shoot again, though. Yeah, I'm going to shoot again, and then I have to my doorbell just rang, so then I'm going to go to the door. That hits. Okay. And... Okay, so he takes seven damage. And that's what I got. So I'm going to just move out of the doorway so that everybody can come in to about there. And I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Missed. What would you like to do? Uh, first, I suppose, run and get up. <laughs> do, 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 do. If I run efficiently, <laughs> I can run through here. Here. And after my efficient running, okay. I'm gonna check that one. Go for it. <clears throat> uh, soft 20 to hit. That hits. For 13, 17 damage. Okay, your next attack. Oh, yeah. What am I talking? Yonti pure blood. These are the Yonti that look like humans, mostly. Ooh, almost rolled a one. Uh, does a ten hit? It does not. I didn't think it would. For the bonus, I will attempt to just um. No, I can't do that. Okay. Um. Shit. I guess I'll just disengage back to here. Okay. Elmira, what would you like to do? Is the um the is a dwarf that's gonna get killed? Is that right? Yes. Up on the altar. Yes. Okay, I am going to have Jurgen dash me over there. I'm going to hop up. Oh, not you, Jurgen. I hop towards the altar, and I'm going to cast Magic Circle around me and the orf. Okay. Uh, what does Magic Circle do? Um, you create a 10 foot radius, 20 foot tall cylinder of magical energy centered on a point. And, uh, the enemy creatures can't willingly enter the cylinder by non magical means. Gotcha. And they have disadvantage on attack rolls at targets within this cylinder. Okay. So the Yonti Malisons, because uh, Jurgen entered their threat range, get attacks of opportunity on Jurgen with their scimitars. Well, actually. One gets an uh, attack of opportunity with scimitar. 23 to hit Jurgen. And of course, this the end of Jurgen. For six I'll points of ahead. slashing damage. Okay. And the one with the snake arms, uh, one of its snake arms is going to try to bite Jurgen. 
but misses with a seven. Okay, so you and the dwarf are in this cylinder. Um, from the all descriptions, uh, th now that you're up close like this, from all you notice two things. <clears throat> from descriptions, the dwarf appears to be uh, Varam, the white, and the Yon T is holding a very special kind of dagger that appears to be made from a dragon's tooth. The Yonti Malisons. Hmm. The first one with the scimitar is going to make. Uh, let's see here. He's going to make two scimitar attacks on Jurgen. Misses with an eight. Misses with a seven. So Jurgen is fairly safe. The other Yonti. Dead as shit if you got hit. The other Yon T Malison will go ahead and take the attack of opportunity from Jurgen. And we'll move up here and uh, ready in action for anybody who comes closer uh, to attack. So go ahead and have Jurgen make his attack of opportunity. I got a nat 20. Nice, double damage. <laughs> and he's gonna fight. Four plus two piercing damage, and then they have to make a DC eleven strength saving throw or be knocked prone. So I'll find some D fours. So he doesn't do any of that. He falls flat on his ass and is prone. points of damage. Okay. Yeah. So he uses half his movement to stand up and he moves to uh, slightly uh, not as far, but he readies an action for any who are coming in closer. Schlagen, what would you like to do? Okay. I should be able to move to about there. From there, I will uh, send my horse in if well, we let him go through first, and I'll tell him to do a uh, trample over this guy in the middle. Okay. We'll run him over a horsey, horsey. <laughs> Go, little Sebastian. Uh, One hundred percent singing. Bye, bye, little Sebastian. If something happens to him, just so you all know, it's going to get real weird. <laughs> I, I remember the words. Don't worry. Uh, Twenty-one to hit with the hoops. Yep, that hit. Uh, for five damage. <laughs> And they have to do a DC 14 strength check or be knocked prone. Uh, he got an 18, so he is still standing. Oh, nice. Then and he's going to use his, but well, he's going to use his ready to action to attack your horse. Okay. With two bites from his snake arms. Uh, he misses with a 8, and he misses with a 9. Fuck this dice. That's sad, because the horse's AC is only 11. <laughs> so, 
So from there, that's the horse's turn. So theoretically, the horse should be between uh, Jurgen and that guy. The right. Should be like about here ish. Right. Um. Then for Slogan, I'm going to target Big Blue Guy. <coughs> and I'm going to hit him with a Crown of Madness. Okay. Uh, so he gets a Wisdom save, is that correct? Double check my car. Yes, a uh, Wisdom. Okay, so he fails with a nat one. He's super, my friend. <laughs> no, he's not really your friend, but he is crazy. So, uh, what are you so ordering him right to do? At the uh, the other snake. In, well, don't attack you. Attack the other snakes. Just attack the bad guys. Okay, so, and you did that on the Abomination, right? Yeah, the big blue guy. Okay. All you're right. To, you're to persuade somebody, go with the biggest guy in the room. Right, right. All right, so Shredder, what would you like to do? Bonus action rage, and with that I can move 20 feet, so I can get in between these two. Well, I want to attack this guy first. Okay. Hazaron Reckless. Glad I'm reckless. Soft 20 instead of a natural one. That <laughs> hits. 30 points of damage. Okay. Your next attack. Uh, if he's still up, same guy. 17 doesn't sound good. That hits. No. 23 more points. Okay, this guy is dead. Then I will move a little bit more uh, to be adjacent to little Sebastian. Okay. And uh, be right next round. Okay. The Yonti Abomination will move over here and attack this Malison. Good. Good. And he gets uh, three attacks with his dragon tooth dagger. Eighteen hits. So the Malison. Uh, that's fourteen points to the Malison. Second attack. 26 to hit for another 14 points to the Malison. 24 to hit. For 16 points to the Malison. The Malison's not looking so good. The Yonti Pure Bloods, let's see. He's going to move there. Oops. He's going to move there. And he's going to move there. All three of them are going to try to beat up on Shredder. They get two melee attacks with their scimitars. That's a six is gonna miss. Yep. Ten's gonna miss. Next, yep. pure blood. Nat twenty. Uh, What's this total? Is it an automatic hit, or can I use my tail? What's this total? Uh, total would be twenty-three, but a nat uh, twenty is an automatic hit. 
Uh, so, let's see here. For nine points of slashing damage, a second attack, 19 to hit. I will use my tail to deflect it. Let's see. Uh, da -da, where'd it go? There. Increase my AC to, well, that's not how it works. It's a five. Um, hold on. Go. Yeah. Uh, so my AC is 22 for that check. Okay. Uh, last guy. Uh, 18 misses and an 11 misses. Yep. Bob Knock, what would you like to do? Alright, excuse the vacuuming in the background. Uh, I am going to step out just enough and hit at Yanti with my longbow. Go for it. That's a hit. Okay, your next attack. I'll just do exactly the same thing. That is also a hit. Okay, anything with a bonus action or movement? And then my bonus action, I'm going to hit him with my rocks. Okay. Uh, all of those hit. Awesome. And one's a crit. Yep. It looks like the second one is a crit. So. Six. So it'll be double. Fourteen. And. Twenty-one total. Okay. This Malison goes down. Okay, so yep. What would okay, your yeah. what would your snakiness like to do? <clears throat> that guy's still. Those three are up. Bad guy. He's on our side. He's madness. Sixteen. Uh, who are you attacking? Oh, the pure blood. Yes, it does. So are you doing a bite? Are you doing a bite attack, or are you constricting? I have to bite first in order to start the constriction. Okay. So how much damage did you do? Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Uh, and then how does your cons do you get a second attack for constrict, or how does that work? New character, she has to relook it up real quick. <laughs> Double checking. Yep. 
it looks like it's a separate attack. Yeah, so you make another attack at plus four, and uh, the creature is then considered grappled. No, wait a minute. So actually, though, so are you just using Constrictor Snake as your stat? Uh, no, Giant Constrictor Snake. <clears throat> So melee attack, melee weapon attack plus six, and then. So you only get one attack. You don't have to yeah. bite. You don't have to bite first. You can you can choose either to bite or do a constrict. What would you prefer? Well, I guess I'll do a constrict then. Okay. So not eighteen damage. So he is. So he is grappled until he can try to break the grapple on his turn, uh, which is a DC 16 to escape. <laughs> so yeah, you see Yip come over and just wrap this guy up, and uh, and then on Yip's next turn, she can I believe she can squeeze. Hold him still while I do a breath weapon. Oh no, you can do 2d8 plus 4 damage right now. So you. It would have been the same damage you, as the bite. Right, so, okay, so he is constricted, he is grappled, and he is getting squeezed to death. Missed, what would you like to do? I'm trying to figure out if Pass Without Trace even has any benefit in this circumstance. It says that a veil of shadows and silence radiates to me. Mm, so I don't know if that makes me like this. Pass Without Trace wouldn't do anything for you because they already know your hair. Uh, pass Without Trace just gives you a plus 10 bonus to your stealth checks. Gotcha. Well then. Um... This one, I guess. Which one's friendly to us? Is it this one or this one? It is this one right here. Oh, that's friendly. Oh, wow. Well, he's, he's, not, he's not friendly. He's madness. I don't know what that means, but he's not attacking us right now, right? No, he's attacking his own people. Until they're gone, probably. <laughs> Okay, I will attempt to attack this one then. Okay. So that one is currently constricted, um, so you'd be at disadvantage to hit. Well, hmm. here's here's a case where the rules don't work. So he's grappled, which means you have advantage on hitting him, but. Because he is constricted by Yip, if you roll a nat 1, you're going to hit Yip. So I'd have to roll two nat 1s because I'm at advantage, though. Technically, yeah. Okay. So it's like I can, if I hit, it's going to go, I have a better chance to hit, but if I F up, I'm going to F up really bad. Okay. Right. Well, I rolled a 15. Okay, so that hits. Sweet. Do I get the sneak attack from you constricted? Yes, you do. Oh, okay. 10, 15, 19, 23. Okay, he's still up. Your second attack. How dare he still be up? Who does he think he is? Uh, 23 to hit that time? Yes. Oh, wow. Lots of ones on that attack roll, but okay. Um, 1, 2, 3, 6, 11, 15. Okay, so he doesn't have to worry about making a uh, grapple escape check because he's dead. 
Well, I appreciate the fact that it was at an advantage because one of those would have missed if it wasn't. <laughs> right. So, anything with bonus action and or movement? Uh... Can you hide in battle? How do you hide in battle? How does that work? Uh, well, you'd have to move to break line of sight to hide. There's not really anywhere in here that you'd be able to break line of sight. If you were like a halfling or something like that, you might try to hide behind one of these statues, but you're a tabaxi, so there's not really... I mean, unless you ran out of the room. That makes no sense. You can hide under the horse. <laughs> <laughs> I like maneuver myself, so I'm standing like perfectly in line with the horse, and anywhere it moves, I move with it. It's like slinging along. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no. I think I'll just um, take the dodge action, or the, use my bonus to take the spin a key on dodge, maybe. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, this makes sense, actually. Just. I'll take my movement and go over here and use my bonus action to hit this one, I guess. Okay. And that's a friendly, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, there's this guy, there's this, like, cluster of bad guys here. Hold on here. Let me clear this up a bit. So, yeah, you've got friendlies and one, uh, one pure blood. So, yeah, you can attack that pure blood. Okay. Nah. Yeah. Fourteen. That hits. Uh, oh, wait, whoops, sorry. I <laughs> forgot to roll to see if it hits. I just rolled the damage, stupid me. <laughs> Does a uh, fifteen hit though? <laughs> yes. <laughs> For 14, do I have to re-roll the damage now? <laughs> no. If you want to do 14 damage, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll take my 14 damage. Uh, Miss, what is your passive perception? Uh, I don't even know how to figure that out. It is 10 plus your wisdom modifier. And if you are proficient in perception, then you get to also add your proficiency bonus. Then it is passive would be 16. Because I have proficiency in it. Okay. All right. So you, when you were standing over in this corner, you felt a draft and you find a secret door. Secret, secret. I found a secret. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, my right. A little bit of movement back. Uh. Okay, so you can go back to the door. Elmira, what would you like to do? Get the movement attack, get an attack of opportunity. Oh, yeah, he would because you didn't disengage, so... I did not. But he only gets a nine. Okay, cool. Um, Jurgen's gonna run away because he's scared. And let's see here. Um, is anybody hurt? Not really. Is our, does our hostage uh, dwarf know anything? Uh, I asked him if he knows anything useful here. about defeating the abomination. So, Varam tells you um, that uh, he and his party were uh, exploring the uh, Diderius's tomb when the Yonti captured him, and they are, all he knows is that they're getting ready to uh, sacrifice him to uh, Mirshalk, the one of the Yonti gods. Uh, 
Okay, so who are you aiming for? The abomination. So the abomination right now is under a crown of madness. Um, is that going to affect anything? Uh, I think it does. Let me double check. Yeah, if you hit him, it'll break the crown. Oh. Right. Accept a potion from us, though. <laughs> Drink this yummy concoction. Alright, I'll aim for the little fella next to him then. I rolled a 20. Yeah. So uh, not 20 hits. Yeah, and it, if you rolled a nat 20, then it's double damage. Okay, so this guy... Uh, let's see here. Dies. Don't move him, I might reanimate him. <laughs> Okay, so he is dead. Uh, this Yanti Malison is going to make two snaky arm bite attacks on Shredder. Okay. Misses with a 15. And misses with an eight. Man, this guy sucks. I like it. Switching my dice, because that one is pissing me off. Uh, Schlagen, what would you like to do? Go hit the red guy. Let's see what's my movement. I can just get more into that guy. I'm going to make these two guys kill each other. Are you? Yeah. Okay, then I will just kind of step into the room. Uh, and I will just concentrate on the big guy and be like, let the hate flow through you. Okay. Uh, Shredder, what would you like to do? I will uh, hazard on the uh, center guy. Okay. Recklessly as usual. Well, that sucks. Does 18 hit? Yes, it does. He takes 28. Okay. Then I'm going to tail whip him. Okay. Whoops. That should have been an attack. Hold on here. There we go. Eighteen to hit with the tail. For yep. Nine points. And this guy oh. dies. Oh, I wanted to use make him hit his friend. He died too soon. Fine. Then I'll attack his other friend with my second hazard on swing. Okay. Crit. That's good. Double damage. <clears throat> 46 points. And this guy dies. <laughs> then I will uh, move up next to Big Ugly. Okay. Well, since uh, he's the last one, I guess just start targeting him. Yep. 
Because unless he has a target, he'll act normally. So I imagine he'll still go after us. Correct. So he doesn't have any big bads to attack. Attack the statue. It's evil. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe he should disembowel himself in shame. Hmm. Seppuku. He uh, attempts to use uh, his innate spellcasting and uses suggestion to tell uh, um, Shredder to leave the temple. Shredder, make a, let's see here, a DC 15 wisdom saving throw. All right, and you're like, no, fuck you, I'm going to stay right here. I like it here. It's pretty. Bog knock. It's getting less <laughs> Bog knock, what would you like to do? I would like to hit him with my longbow. It's pretty boring. A classic. I shoot an arrow at him, I wouldn't hit him with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That can be rough on the bow. Right? That's a critical double damage. Okay. <clears throat> Ten. Okay. Uh, your next attack? Is it going to be exactly the same? <clears throat> That hits. 19. It's good. 12. And then I'm going to hit him with rocks. Go for it. One, two, three. All of those hit. Yes. One, two, Okay. Yep. What would you like to do? <clears throat> sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Spider constrict. Spider constrict. Can you try to constrict him again? Okay. You're gonna try to constrict the constrictor. <laughs> Yep. I mean, I guess if you can shirk him enough, we can, like, interrogate him. Does a 15 hit? Yes, it does. So you take six damage and he's grappled. Okay. Mist, what would you like to do? You said this thing is a spellcaster? It, it has innate spellcasting, yes. Oh. Should, would silence be a useful thing here to the party I asked? You guys want me to silence this thing? Sure. So silence is an area, um, but... I think you could do it and not get Elmira in your in the area. Do, do we want to interrogate him, or are we just flat out killing him? Oh yeah, there's that. Well, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know what he could possibly tell you. Uh, I mean, Elmira's got Varam, so. Oh yeah, Varam knows all. <laughs> If he's an innate caster, does he have to say his spells out loud? That is a good question. I would say yes. Because I thought if it was... Oh, he does. Okay. Yeah, he, they still have to use... They, they don't have to use any material components, but they still have to use, uh, use verbal and somatic components. Well, if he's grappled, he might not be able to do the somatic part. Right. 
Then silence too. He's just gonna be stuck. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is that a yeah? Sure, silence him. I'm like running for it as I ask the question. Do you guys want me to silence it? <laughs> Debate, 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 debate. Yeah. Yeah, that is a girl when a girl can hear me. <laughs> Alright, I will try to use my way of the shadow ability in Shadow Arts to silence. Okay, so. Does he. Any, hold on, let me double he check. A, yes. There is a DC save to that. Uh, what kind of save? Is yeah. it wisdom or. Um. Jesus, I have to use my wisdom modifier, so I assume that it's a wisdom save. So he has to make a wisdom save. Okay, so. Um, I think so, yeah. He gets an 18. Oh, he's safe. So he is not silenced. Anything with a bonus action or more movement? I should have cast it on the wall behind him. Of on him directly. Damn. Well, hold on. Let me double check. Uh, I don't know how silence. It doesn't say anything about a saving throw on the spell, so maybe I'm wrong about that. It looks to me like it's a ritual without a saving throw, so it's a oh. roll to hit rather than a saving throw. It's like darkness, but for silence. It's just right, happens. yeah, it's just a 20-foot yeah. radius sphere. <clears throat> so okay, then I'd like to put the 20-foot radius sphere so that it's right like at like whatever the 20 feet would be, so it's like just the edge of it goes right at the creature. So that the rest of us can still communicate to this side of it. Yeah, like that. Exactly. Okay, so the silent sphere kind of comes into the uh, magic circle, but not enough that it would silence Elmira and Varam. Cool. All right, so he and is silent. Where I am and let them do what they do. Okay. Elmira, what would you like to do? I'm gonna use it. Get you and Varam out of here. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm not very fast. Um. Well, he's constricted this turn, so at least get him off the altar. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can, yeah at this I can point, we're just right. And out. That seems like a good idea. We can get rid of this thing. It's fine. <laughs> Alright, and I'll back up some, and I'll, I need to use it a second level slot, I think, so I'll try getting Bolt on second level against him. Okay. 19. That hits. A. Um. Mm. Mm. Points of radiant damage and advantage on attacks, but that is probably already that way because he's grappled, right? Wait, right, but he is now all glowy too. Yeah. Um, how many points of damage did I say? I don't remember. I think it was eight. I um I did on a second level though, so I needed to add one more d6. I just want one more. Yeah. Make it was eight. <laughs> okay, it's nine now. <laughs> okay. Uh, Elmira, what is your uh, passive perception? Let me check. Sixteen. Okay, so you feel a draft and discover that this statue is actually the a secret door as well. Well, I'm going to worry about that later. <laughs> okay. Schlagen, what would you like to do? 
Um, no, not really to do. Get it back, get it back. Guess I'll walk over here next to my horsey. Oh, um, I'll shoot that guy with a uh, Eldritch Blast and hope I don't hit Dipper. <laughs> okay, so from there you'd be at disadvantage. Well, I guess it cancels out because uh, yeah. you have advantage because he's constricted. So, yeah. The bolt one. Uh, 18 to hit. That hits. Bolt two. Uh, I'm pretty sure 11 misses. <clears throat> 11 does miss. Uh, for 10 damage. Okay. Shredder, what would you like to do? Oh, I will release the Crown of Madness because there's no reason to keep that going. Okay. I will uh, Reckless Deck of Hazard on again. Reaction will work up with this. 25 to hit. Yes. Go damage numbers. I want to do damage. Weird. We'll do it this way. Twenty-five points of damage. Okay. Second. Twenty-nine to hit. Yes. Twenty points of damage. Then the tail. And he is dead. He goes down. Well, he saved me one of my consumables, so that's fine. And there is much rejoicing. Squeeze him a little more for good measure. <laughs> so, you, uh, Elmira has Varam uh, in custody, and you found two secret passage or two secret doors, one to the west and one to the east. Hey guys, I found a secret door over here. Me, me too. To do first in, first out, order of appearance. Yeah, it seems like a good idea. Oh. I want to check for other secret doors now. And you do, there is uh, one piece of loot. Is it a loot? It's a piece of loot. It's got a label. What's a piece of loot? So the Yonti Abomination took a dagger uh, from Varam and was going to use it to sacrifice him. It is a dragon tooth dagger. Uh, it is a dagger fashioned from the tooth of a dragon. While the blade is obviously a fang or predator's tooth, the handle is leather wrapped around the root of the tooth, and there is no cross guard. It is a plus one bonus to attack rolls and damage. Uh, on a hit with this weapon, the target takes an additional 1d6 acid damage. Nice. Uh, against enemies of the Cult of the Dragon, the dragon's bonus to attack rolls and damage increases to plus 2, <coughs> and the extra acid damage is 2d6. If you're part of the cult? If you're an enemy of the cult. So if you were to stab one of you guys with it, it would actually be a plus two dagger and do uh, an additional 2d6 acid damage. But to everybody else, it's a plus one and 1d6 extra acid damage. Well, that's weird. Anybody need a dagger? I mean, I'm good. I like daggers. Take it. Hurtness. I mean, I imagine we're probably... Are we going to fight many enemies of the cult? 
Probably not, but I mean, but I mean, even if you attack a cult member with it, it's still a plus one dagger that does one d four plus one d six acid damage. Yep. Yeah. Oh, a d four plus. Oh, it does a d four as a dagger, and then a d six for the acid damage. Correct. Yep. Gotcha. Take it. Sure. Take it. Yeah, Schlagen definitely doesn't want any part of that. Okay. <laughs> That goes against the wind wall. So the first secret door you find a small room. Uh, let's see here. It is the Enclave's treasure hoard. In this little room, you find 800 gold pieces, 100 platinum pieces, two, two cloudy emeralds worth 500 gold pieces each, okay. a necklace of 22 cryopreus beads worth 20 gold pieces each, and Two scrolls, one scroll of levitation, and the other scroll is call lightning. Levitation is handy. Okay, got it. Who wants to carry the scrolls? I'll take it. Call lightning, right? Yep. Uh, since I'm trying. I'm trying to be uh, uh, Iron Man, so if I had the scroll of levitation, I could kind of fly. <laughs> well, you could go up and down at least. <clears throat> the other secret passage. Uh, hover and then come down. <laughs> yeah. The other secret passage is a narrow stairwell that leads up and out. This is the the way that the Yon T were entering and leaving their temple. Okay, we found an extra exit. That's cool. Is there anything special about this um, shrine uh, tablet area where the sacrifice was going to happen? No, just that they were going to sacrifice Varam there. Um, Varam is uh, accepting of his uh, status as the party's prisoner. Um, and he basically tells you he doesn't have the white dragon mask. Um, he lost it. And he came to Diderius' tomb to try and use the divination powers of the pool to find out where the mask is. Um, what he learned from the divination pool is that Severin, the leader of the cult of the dragon, already has it in his possession. And it is at the Well of Dragons with the other dragon masks. Um, and he tells you that um, he really has no choice but to be your prisoner because um, if he were to try to go back to the dragon cult, Severin would kill him for losing the mask. Um, what did he sacrifice to use the divination pool? One of his own party members. Slogan will slap him and tell him, how dare you lose my mask? So the guy that you found uh, in, just before you went into Diderius's tomb, there was a body that you found with a whole bunch of Yonti arrowheads around. But he, the body wasn't killed by the arrowheads. It died from a slashed throat. And Varam is the one who slashed his throat. Well, that's pretty naughty. A jerk. I would like to put my claws around his throat and tell him you better not think of doing that to any of us. No, he is welcome. He, he's happy to be your prisoner and will follow you all the way back to Waterdeep. Um, you all get a level. So, when you said the white mass is with the others, so is he implying all the rest of the masks are in one place? 
Well, Severin, Severin has a mask, so, um, you know, he just says that it's at the, the, the Well of Dragons. Um, there's at least two there. Good to know. Two seems less dangerous than five or four. Finally make a hundred hit points. Woo. Nice. Damn. So it takes you uh, about two or three weeks to travel all the way back to Waterdeep. And you return to the Council of Waterdeep um, to a surprising development. Uh, when you return to the Council of Waterdeep, uh, you learn that Lord Neverember, Dagalt Neverember, has been replaced as the open lord of Waterdeep by Lady Laryl Silverhand. And Neverember is, has been replaced uh, mostly because the mass lords of Waterdeep were tired of his shit. And um, so Neverember... <clears throat> as Open Lord of Waterdeep, has basically hired Mintarn mercenaries to be um, the navy and uh, most of the army of Waterdeep. And that sat as a problem with Waterdeep. They wanted to keep it in-house. And Never Ember has done a number of other things that were not cool. And uh, most of it is that he's basically spending Waterdeep's money on rebuilding Neverwinter. And the, the mass lords of Waterdeep are like, you know, why, why are we spending our money to build another city-state? So, um, yeah, if you, if you like it so much, then get off your ass and move up there. And so Neverember is kind of in a uh, state of disgrace, um, taking a seat next to Lady Laryl Silverhand. Um, the delegates... Um, so, on the matter of Varam the White, <clears throat> um, the Harpers and, and Terran specifically... <laughs> Um, are very happy that you captured him because they can question Varam and he can give them valuable insight into the workings, inner machinations of the cult of the dragon. Um, the Emerald Enclave is nonplussed. They, um, they think it would have been better if you had just killed him outright. Um, and it doesn't really matter that he's alive because evidently without the white dragon mask, he is no longer a threat. But they don't. They don't care one way or the other. You are met by um, a Emerald Enclave uh, member named Delon Winterhound, and he is currently involved in investigations into recent dragon attacks in the Misty Forest, and. Uh, as you're talking to him, uh, King Melondrak of the Elves comes up and waves away Delon's uh, concerns about these dragon attacks and tells you that uh, there's, there haven't been a dragon attack in the Misty Forest in ages. Uh, my Elves have increased their patrols and fortified their positions. Uh, but Delon Winterhound insists that there are dragon attacks going on. Sitting next to Lady Laryl Silverhand, you meet another new person. Um, there is this slender build young woman named Elia. And Elia 
comes up and introduces herself to you and confides in you that she is actually the silver dragon, a Terry, a, uh, I'm going to butcher this name, uh, a Terry Lee Carnos, and a Terry Lee Carnos gives you an invitation to meet a council of metallic dragons and to discuss uh, the situation with the cult of the dragon. So you have two options. Do you want to meet with the metallic dragons first, or do you want to uh, follow up on the dragon attacks in the Misty Forest first? A slug and lights metallic dragons? That's his people's. Okay. So he will go with the bird. Cool. When that, that's the closer. Uh, well, let's see here. So the metallic dragons <clears throat> will meet high up in the Nether Mountains, uh, which I'm not even sure where those are. I'd have to look it up on the map. But Atelia uh, Carnos tells you that she will grant you the boon of flying the entire party there. Uh, the Misty Forest, on the other hand, uh, is actually fairly close and is just mm, maybe 50 miles southeast of Daggerford. So it's, it's not far. You could, you could be to the Misty Forest inside of a week. Probably more like four days. Okay, but um, investigating attacks it might take longer than having a conversation. So That's true. It might be a wash. So I, was, I was asking on the off chance that the conversation was closer. Also, that would have like, I don't know. I'll just, um, I'll just agree with Schlagen then. Okay. I'll go and talk to the top dragons. Yeah, over there. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Uh, just for the party to know, I took level six in Paladin. So if you're making a saving throw near me, you'll get a bonus of four to that save. Two. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I have, I'm flat with genius, which will do the same thing. All right, and those those will stack. <clears throat> Oh, they, oh, they stack. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, to get uh, Schlagen's bonus, you have to be within 10 feet of him, I believe. <clears throat> okay. At higher levels, that increases. At, at higher levels, or if for some reason, huh, on the outside, rare chance that Schlagen were to get, like, a Holy Avenger sword, uh, that would increase to, like, 30 feet. Yeah, mine is 30 feet. For ability checks or saving throws. So between Fair the two of us, you are good. Okay. So, uh, next week, we will start with your uh, council meeting with the Metallic Dragons. This is a, a I know it's a little, ten minutes early, but um, this is a perfect spot to break. And we will start next week with your meeting with the Metallic Dragons. So, Cool. cool. See you guys next week. Bye. Yep. Have a good one, guys. Enjoy your weekend. Cheers, cheers.